Welcome to our space where talking about the inspiring things with inspiring people is what inspires us. Waiting for you here are the infinite possibilities that creation, collaboration and connection have to offer. A universe where we see everything through roasting the spectacles that help us to keep our faith in the power of imagination alive and well. And now, let's talk. Hello, I'm delighted today to welcome Dolce Ball to this episode of Metralla Rosa. She is the creator and the director of Sketch Appeal, Sketchy Beaches. Should I say beach? head beach, beach head yeah, of bitch. these <laughs> amazing projects. Either way, Dulce is a colorful, amazing advocate of the live drawing scene and someone that really, really believes in the power of drawing. Um, there's no other way to start an interview with you but asking why we all should draw. Um, I think oh well I so I don't think we should, should we don't all have to draw not everyone should but I think everyone can draw and I think everyone can benefit from drawing more I think everyone who thinks they can't draw can and um, they're just scared so my job or my mission is really to kind of encourage and empower people with confidence um, to draw more and to feel the benefits of what is a really like yoga a really brilliant form of active meditation um, a really good way to relax it's you know it's a form of mindfulness and it's a really powerful form of social cement as well it really brings people together so whether you do it alone or do it around other people it is just a, a really joyful thing and a really joyful playground um, that I think people just assume because of drawing has been kind of if you, you like I had I did and so many people I meet it's like when they learn learnt to draw at school they were taught a very right a right and a wrong way mm. and you think of you sort of, draw these like these yeah and that like that yeah proportion perspective technical pencil sketches that's what drawing kind of conjures up in a lot of people's minds and I think that then unless they were really nurtured at school and they were the ones who were good at art they then you stop even though like we as kids we draw incessantly and in, in you know furiously all over the walls all over the tape I think with we grow up and then it's it, we become you know we get measured on on our performance at school and I think then yeah you just get kind of crippled by anxiety and not being good enough um and what I do at my events is really to kind of really unlock the inner child and bring that moment back um through lots of playful experimental drawing um and I really you definitely make the the create the sensation <clears throat> with all your branding and the communication you put out there mm -hmm. that drawing is fun and it's accessible and it's easy and I think it's the best way to uh, uh to get into anything really yeah. uh, considering that it's going to be enjoyable mm -hmm. it's going to be easy yeah easy everything requires a little bit of commitment but easy because you're going to enjoy it it's going to be easy um when did you start drawing with this kind of consciousness with this kind of percep perceptive perception of this is actually something that is serving me. Yeah, um, I, it's really interesting because I'm just um, thinking about when I used to, I did draw at school and I loved drawing. Um, I didn't do, I did Spanish at university, you know, <laughs> but I, I didn't really ever draw f in the same way I draw now in a sort of for, for pleasure and for the sheer joy of it. Or, okay, or to relax. that's interesting. I drew for school, I okay. drew for my own level art. I didn't draw, I Did drew you remember yourself result. having this much fun? at no, that time no never like I remember probably when I was a kid I used to draw all of my school books as a way of kind of remembering because drawing is such a great tool for learning I think we forget that we think it is just a, an, an artistic process it's really not it's such a brilliant way to to remember and if you're a visual learner particularly so um but I no I didn't and I think it was when I went and you know this story I went life drawing about five years ago nearly six years ago to an art macabre one of Nikki's events drawing James Bond semi-naked James Bond <laughs> and I at that point I was really really struggling with my mental health I had relapsed into anorexia I was really at rock bottom and I was six and a half stone I was about to I was 
potentially going to be hospitalised and I don't know what made me go to that class. Um, I mean obviously it's something that as a creative person I might do but I hadn't been before and I think I went to class and literally it was a really cheesy epiphany moment where I went oh my god this is this is and I, I remember turning to my friend and being like this is so much fun isn't this funny? Well, I wasn't enjoy? drinking I was yeah. I just even being in a, in a let's say generally bad place in terms of I forgot myself yeah. and I think that's, that's the thing is when you when you that moment I found myself and I forgot myself at the same time and, and said, I wow, think that was wow. where any time when I look back now when I remember when I was really in, in a really low point when I lived in Spain and I again that was sort of my first delve into the depths of anorexia um I went to the Dali Museum and I went at 10 a.m with a sketchbook and I literally I, I just forgot time they kicked me out at closing time and I hadn't noticed the day and, and normally as as anyone who's got an anxiety disorder or, or any sort of mental health that noise especially when you're anorexic like that anorexic brain just constantly telling you what to do and that you've got to carry you've got to eat this you've got to go and drink that yeah because it's that mean that's the need of control the only time it's not there is when i'm drawing and and it's it's through drawing every day since that live drawing class five to six years ago i've gradually managed to turn down the volume on that controlling critical Mind. mind that yeah. is you know it's your inner critic and everyone has one and mine is just so strong yeah. but i've yeah and i think through joy to through giving my inner child my inner mind some more time to play every single day something that definitely so, connects you with your own um uh, real self yeah yeah because it's the only way to quiet that mind yeah. when you when you do that kind of exercise mm -hmm. of real connection yeah and um, Thank you, by the way, for being open about this. I think we all should do it when, when something has been yeah. good for us to help us. Well, that's why. Like, communicate yeah. that yeah. it's key to keep going your, yeah. with your own life, but also to make that information available yeah. to the others. And, and, and t now that you said that, I, would, I don't want to lose the opportunity to ask you how that, for example, the fact that you draw a lot of self-portraits, yeah. how is connected the self-acceptance, the self-love, the um, looking at yourself not as, a, uh, not as features only. It sounds contradictory because mm -hmm. when you draw, you look at things. But it feels like at the end you are not looking at things in a very in a superficial way. You are just looking at things without putting any meaning on yeah. those things. Yeah. How, how has it helped your your own particular journey? Um, I think I've only really started to draw self portraits in the last year, and it's something that I found quite uncomfortable at first. But I felt kind of compelled to do it mainly because of like the trend for self love, and I started to run self love I workshops. I thought you were a lot into no, it. No, 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 no. I started to run self love workshops this year. I did one, and I thought, God, I better write draw this self love magazine, this little zine, because it was a self love zine workshop. And I, I if that's a challenge that I'm going to set to other people, I've got to do it as an example. Um, I practice what I preach and I, I can't ever do a workshop without having made sure I know it's fun or that it's doable or that it's accessible to people and I yeah I just couldn't put anything out there that I wouldn't want to do myself that's the whole point of what I'm doing um, I created events for myself mainly because they didn't exist <laughs> so um, wow well I know it's sketchy pictures you know it's that's I wanted to hang out with I, I wanted to hang out with other women who like drawing yeah. there wasn't a group like that so I started one there isn't a magazine like sketch of people so I launched one you know it's very much serving my own needs because I think I know there are many other people like me you, out there exactly. you know it's it's not just me and that's given me a great kind of reassurance that it isn't just me um and I've found my people through it but um but yeah self-portraiture I think is a really interesting one because it's not I'm not as far along the journey as you might think in terms of self-acceptance or self-love it's, it's I think it's a daily like you must like, it you know, is. It's, it's an ongoing it is daily, working yeah, process yeah. like like sketching there's it's no not, way to the end any. result isn't you know ultimate I love myself it's just I think one thing that's interesting is that when you, and I know this from drawing other people, you're not looking with your critical eye, you're not looking at features and flaws, mm -hmm. you're not in the same way when you look in the mirror, what do we do? Yeah, you are not like, looking what's wrong to, my makeup? Exactly. What's wrong with me? to what criticize, do I need to you are looking yeah. 
to when you're drawing yourself and especially if you look in the mirror and you draw yourself you're drawing details the artist kind of artist you know you're looking for details you're looking for textures you're looking you're looking beyond what the surface errors are you know you're not thinking about what's wrong with this person it's not why did this person she, have blue it, eyes you, 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 <laughs> well for those a start, eyes should be green <laughs> yeah no but when i'm trying to capture when i'm drawing sketchy bitches portraits i'm not thinking god What's going on with their, you know, whatever? Yeah. You're just thinking, God, I want to do them justice. But also, not even that. You're just thinking, I want to connect. I'm just responding I want to this to person. Connect. What exactly. can I see here? Exactly. What's the story? What is this person's energy? What What can I get from you? What? Because I'm not. Yeah, it's really. Di and I think that's when you're drawing yourself. You you're looking at yourself with kinder, more curious eyes. And actually, the, when I see what I've drawn and see the portrait, I then got not always the perfect portrait that looks like me in, in real life, but just as much as a selfie, an actual photo doesn't look like me in real life. It's and just an more, angle, it's just it's a just moment, exactly. it's just that, And there's far more yeah. truth in my drawings than there is in the pictures of me, because that is permanence, that spirit is will always be me, but those photos will change, you know, I will not always look like this. And that, for me, building this record of how I am fit, how I'm expressing myself and, and this sort of character that I am, I see so much more truth and value in that. Um, and also, you know, you've got these, this sort of bank of photos that you, from the past that you can look back on, and you must know this from seeing, you know, having pictures of yourself. You, it's so great to have a record of like colourful, strange looking self portraits to kind of think of in the back of my mind instead of thinking of oh that awful photo that someone took of me or that really amazing photo when I looked really great when I was 17 or you know all those kind of net like some sometimes having that sort of reference point that visual reference imagery yeah, yeah, yeah. is actually a really good thing when you're kind of creating it yourself and you're building and this whole new way of seeing you have yourself of yourself are more um creative than literal yeah it's much better because as you were saying you can see what you really see in you mm -hmm. especially if it's a self-portrait it, it works beautifully as well when other people draw you yeah because it allows you to see the things you don't necessarily see but are connected with emotions mm -hmm. and with the exercise of um, uh, mutual cooperation, collaboration, mm. it's all there, yeah. it's all there because a drawing is that. Yeah. Uh, a photography can also be that mm. and sometimes not because sometimes and you work as a model you can tell us I much did. better. <laughs> but God, sometimes I, <laughs> I know there are, 20 years ago. There are fiti, um, shootings that sometimes photographers don't even know the name of the mm. model. Yeah. Um, oh, it's weird you just said that because I'm sorry, I'm just putting in, but thinking about the pictures. So, I did model when I was a teenager when that was legal, and I look at those pictures and I do not see me at all. I really because I was so styled, and I was, I know it was a long time ago. You were an instrument to communicate yeah. something, which is something okay, which wasn't me, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. uh, but but what you are trying to do now, yeah. it's also okay, yeah. and it's even more okay yeah. sometimes. It feels more rewarding, more, more true, yeah, true to yourself. So then. You you went to that session of Art mm -hmm. Macabre, Hel Macabre, Macabre, <laughs> Hello <laughs> Nikki, <laughs> Macabre, <laughs> Death and Drawing, because so it, joyous, that's one it? of those words, Art Macabre, that when I see it, I read it in my head in Spanish, Art Macabre, that's Macabre. That. We'll say that so every time, I just have realized now that I think I haven't said that word out loud, but always in my head, that's well, funny. Art Get Macabre. <laughs> Um, you went to that session and yeah. since that moment to the moment you uh, came out with your own project Sketch Appeal, mm -hmm. how, how many years were in between, what were you doing at that time, why did you start it with, with this beautiful project and how, how, how was that? Wow, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> a lot of questions, sorry. Um, okay, long story short, I no, I was working full-time in marketing, uh, which is the profession that's I've worked That's why in. Yeah. your brand is so clever. Well, I've, I've done it for 15 years in brand marketing. I was working full-time and I started to draw more. I started to draw every day, share my stuff on Instagram. And I think like a lot of people do, I 
when they first start drawing or start doing a bit of illustration, I was selling a few prints and going to art fairs. I did my first illustration fair and I was very proud. And I look back and, and look at the state of my stand and it was so embarrassing. But you know, I was just, I'd made it all happen. I made it myself and to have that sort of stall. I'm really so not proud. embarrassing. Oh, I have seen photos brilliant. of that. It was all But it was good. a lot, you know, and actually the drawings I was doing then, and it isn't, like I said, it's not about, I never set out to get good at it. But over time, the more you do it, of course, and it's partly, it's, well, ma massively down to the amount of confidence because you stop thinking, this has got to be right, or it's just because you do it so often, it doesn't matter if one isn't mm. amazing. Or, or, and sometimes I look, I'm actually, you only look back at a few of them and go, I really love this. But it, anyway, so the I did a few fairs and I carried on doing that, I think, for quite a while. And I, I launched, I did my first event after another Art Macabre class and I, I was I went with a friend and we were sat there and I kind of I don't know what I was just like, oh, I, has anyone ever done like a sketch dating night because I was single at the time and I, I'd really like you know a, a bit like speed dating but instead you draw each other but and my friend said, yeah my friend was like oh my god but no I, but if that's they haven't it's a genius you should do it and I just kind of went oh yeah and then after <laughs> that I was like no and I couldn't stop thinking about it and I said to Kate who was girls with at the time and she was like let's meet and brainstorm. So we had this massive brainstorm and I still remember it. And we sat with loads of post-it notes trying to come up for this name for a sketch dating night. And I won't, I'll spare you all of them. It was hilarious, but we, we took a day off work to do this thing. Um, and we sketch came up with- Sketch appeal? The, no, was one finally, of <laughs> sketch, appeal, sketch appeal was what the sketch date. So you know, yeah, that was my yeah, first event yeah. was called Sketch Appeal. Um, and actually it was really hard to get men to come. We sold lots of women's tickets. And like any speed dating night, I think the male numbers are always tricky to get. So, so I it turned was your it into, destiny to make a club of so it became the social. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, then I turned it into women. No, no I didn't. I, then it became the social sketch up and it became uh, a similar thing, but just anyone and everyone. It was a social sketch up. And then I started to do themed nights. So I did my Wes Anderson night and my Frida Kahlo night. And I, I've carried on doing those um, on the side of working full time um, up until last January I that was when I had the idea for sketchy bitches and I again it was very much like that what's the difference between so, sketch appeal and sketchy bitches well sketch appeal is the company sketch sketch appeal as an event doesn't exist um so the social sketch up is for everyone okay but I don't really do that many of those anymore but sketchy bitches is a community is a meetup group that started as a group for women only who like drawing, basically. Okay. And that was started through meetups. So but you is, don't have an Instagram event. page no, 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 for no, no, that? No, 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 It's all okay. under Sketch Appeal. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really... Under, under the same umbrella, yeah. but it's a yeah. kind it's of... It's like an offshoot of it, okay. and not a sub-brand. Um, and that, that is the format of Sketchy Bitches is... Um, well, it was never meant to be, but it started as I wanted to just do it as an informal hangout and, and we'd take it in turns as creative women to take to bring a to challenge. To empower to bring yourself, a, yeah. one and so all of you together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was meant to be like an informal monthly meetup, not an event, just a thing that I've put out there to see if anyone was interested and like-minded and wanted to do it. So and that I've was got, without paying for a ticket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, initially just, it was okay. just being in a cafe okay. and then it got so popular that actually I started to make need a bigger space then I needed to start paying higher so then I started to charge a little bit um but the format stuck so the first session I took these little business cards, mm -hmm. business cards that's and, genius yeah that's no, so it wasn't it was fun. just me going that's what amazing. can I do she and, she brings um some of the sketchy beaches events you have a little like cars for presentation and then uh, you have the opportunity to draw everyone yeah. and everyone draws so you. So you all get to pose and, then, and you all get to you all get to draw and be drawn and everyone gets to take away the little cards at the end. So it's like sketch work. Where are mine? I think I, yeah, I put them, them so... Like so I mini, wanted to keep mini them so safe. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a really lovely kind of group meditation more than, more than it is like, and I think it's not definitely not bitchy um no, lot, it's, definitely you know, it's not. really a, i think from a because it started on meetup it's a quite an international community of people because a lot of people find it when they've just arrived in the uk they don't necessarily speak the native language so it's a really because we're communicating largely through drawing and non-verbal yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter and i you know i'm always very sort of inclusive in the way that i approach those sessions because i'm very mindful of 
How oh, just everyone, everyone being excluded yeah. if they are not yeah. regulars or okay. or they're not any good at it or all those things that when you go and even sometimes I've been to life join or other classes and been like I'm quite intimidated here because everyone's either really good or they're really quiet and no one's speaking and yeah. I, I don't know if I'm yeah, among no, friends no, and no, all no, these paranoid yeah. like and I don't enjoy things like that so I really want to create a really warm welcoming everyone can do this there's no it's not a competition no one's going to judge your end result it's just about being together, sharing our creative energy and just having some sort of downtime away from, you know, the realities of life, to be honest. And through that sort of a lot of conversations, you know, we we chat and we bond and and, and it's strange because I've developed such a deep sense of understanding of some of the regulars and I feel like I know them really well and yet there's a lot of unspoken understanding we yeah. don't know haven't necessarily talked about things that are going on but you can because you're seeing things you can yeah, sense things and because you, can you sense create emotion. together yeah. so you you so yeah so that's a really different event to the social sketchups that tend to be in bars and they are kind of they're not as i suppose they're not as sacred um and they're not as much for me that what is, kind of uh, venues do you prefer to for these events of ske sketchy, sketchy beaches, beaches. It, i mean do you have a, an ethic regarding that or a kind of perfect kind of place yeah it's yet to exist never <laughs> no never not in a pub not no, in a big in a room a and no. that's the thing london is such a great space a great place for creative you know things that you know for what i'm doing but ultimately without your own space where you can make it safe and warm and welcoming yeah. and you can have coffee and cake and whatever it you kind of then you're in the back end of a bar or you're it's never quite the ultimate kind of comfortable kind of studio space that i'd love but i'll get there and i think that's kind of my five-year goal is maybe have, have a residence space. have yeah, a space yeah. where you can always come back yeah. and be more regular and, and do many stuff and make it call you know and do many effort every time you have to bring people to some to a place yeah. when you change too much mm. it's a lot of uh, effort on the communication yeah, yeah, yeah. communicational side yeah. aspect of it but um And now, now that you you have created this beautiful project that engages so well with so many people all around the world, because also you have uh, your we website and you have Instagram, which is very active and yeah. very beautiful and colorful. And I know many of your followers don't even live in London. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've had quite a lot of international orders and customers for the uh, magazine, which is another reason why. I launched the magazine because I, you know, it's not just. This London. is the magazine. Um, yeah. <laughs> you you is, can you can look at it properly later, but uh, yes, I wanted to ask you about the magazine. Mm -hmm. How how it happened? Why? What was what was the motivation behind it? Um, I think the magazine was really it was something that I I don't know what at what point it came about as an idea. I was being told like I was doing those craft fairs with my illustrations and I was meeting a lot of people who were saying did you do all of these oh they're amazing I can't draw and I'd be like oh, you can you really can they're, oh no I can't draw my daughter likes drawing but I can't draw and I met a lot of people who said that and I also met a lot of people who said you should do a colouring book you know and I'm like I don't want to do a colouring book because people <laughs> know how people are way more creative than colouring in and I'm I just got really <laughs> you can draw you know yeah. i think that's the thing is i i have got some there's some a tiny bit of coloring in in the magazine but i really you make. always can color in if you yeah. want there's always something to color in but everywhere. i think for me you've got to with to experience true mindfulness and this was never like i'm determined to make people experience mindfulness but i think you have to be challenged to a point where you're actually actively engaged whereas i think you can be very passively coloring in mm. and i know some people find it relaxing but i just find it it boring. is relaxing it's boring yeah. color it's boring <laughs> That's why. Okay. And you know what I said? I can't do things that I don't believe in and I wouldn't want to do myself. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. all very selfish. Self right, that's very, but then you, very good. If you believe in something and you, you, for me, I have to believe in it and I have to really, yeah, I can't sell things that I don't, that I wouldn't want to consume myself. Good, like, good. That's called it. integrity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I so. I pride myself on this. Um, so the magazine was really a kind of culmination of people saying these things and me going, no, you can, you can. And knowing that there were some great kids magazines out there, really cool independent magazines, beautifully designed with like activities and like cute stories and inspiration, like lots of fun 
Max for Kids. And that and then, was your inspiration. Yeah, and also the fact that there were so many shit magazines for adults that were like, how to paint watercolour. Well, so many. The art magazines for adults are either really cool and you don't know what they're about but they look really cool and exactly. they're like quite and it's like like quite intimidating yeah. i'm like what is this what's it even for and it's just should i ask yeah, no for like 50 do i have to know magazine. exactly there's lots of that and there was lots for kids and then there was the uh what artist monthly watercolor painting mindfulness magazines that same sorry um that mag <laughs> Some art, super magazine, you know coloring this coloring that all this stuff but there was nothing out there that was really making drawing fun and accessible to and somehow adults in a fun, in a colourful, unique way and that shared real life stories with uh, mainly about women, female artists. That and interviews and it has a little bit of everything but yeah. it's true, the presentation is very appealing very and very catchy <laughs> you because know? It's, ca it's quite yeah. childish yeah. but in a, in a, very, in a very good yeah, way yeah. because there's nothing better to, to, than being sweet and childish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think that's, that's why it's worked. I think it is because it looks, and I designed it, um, and I'm not a designer, but I just wanted to make it happen. And I couldn't afford to pay anyone to do it. So oh, wow. I taught but myself in time, and I wrote it, and I lovely. designed it. And I think that's where you can see that. You can see that it's not done by an in-house design team at a publishing company. You can see that it hasn't just been How smashed many out. You know, it's, it's, it's a work of, it's not a work of art, but it's a work of, it is, a product it of is. sort of, it's it is a lovely love, like object, a lot of love and also, I and also I guess it's gonna become something iconic in exactly. London. Do you have one? <laughs> Do I have one? Like because how many numbers did you came up with? So there are only 10 copies left of that now because I sold the others and I didn't do a massive print run. Um, and I uh, yeah, so that's that, that's all that's left. Um, and it's been really well received. It went, like I said, there was quite a lot of people buying it from overseas um, and people are asking for issue too. So it's, it's amazing. Awesome. And also I know that after this project, this magazine came the deal with a company to publish a book and you are working on that at the moment. So is it the book going to, can you tell us? Something about that project you are so immersed you, at yeah. the moment, working so hard. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, like I said, like you said, it came out of the blue. They, a publishing company, saw the magazine and wow. they contacted me and said they really liked it. And have I ever thought about writing a book? Perfect synchronicity. Yeah, and and really, I mean, as someone who's written most of my career copywriting, marketing, and loved writing as much as I love drawing. I still do, you know, I was a real creative writer when I was younger as well. And I was, for many years in my mid twenties, I did a lot of creative writing. That was always my thing. Wow. Um, but it then became very, I became quite perfectionistic so about it because I know I was good at it and I was told that I was good at it. So then the pressure's on and I stopped writing, started drawing, the pressure wasn't on and the fun was, you know, and I think a then to combine this, yeah problem that you want it to be so 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 good that you don't do it yeah yeah well more than that it's just like i couldn't ever get to the end of what i was trying to write when i was doing my creative writing so i think the book um combining both this to be able to write a book um or to be asked to write a book is a, about drawing is such a but do you talk like about me, drawing in itself or do you talk in a very it's, personal oh. way from it, it 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 has a very strong biography bi uh, biography perspective or yeah. is it more like in a third person talking about a subject yeah i mean it's <laughs> kind of a bit of both I'm, i don't want to make it too much about me because no one wants to read about me but also i know i mean i'm really um mindful of the fact that it can feel quite soulless if it is just a textbook you yes. approach and i think what people more and more people want a real strong narrative voice in there and i think yes. that's where yes. because you i don't read stuff much yeah, more. Oh you feel like okay there's someone that i can relate it's get, to yeah and it's getting the tone right i think and that's what i tried to do in the magazine because i'm not I can get really put off immediately if someone's tone is really patronising or re I'm, and I'm a real, whenever I do read, which is rarely, I need a really, really strong na narrative voice. I need someone to kind of be compelling enough for me to want yeah. to believe in what they're saying. And um, somehow so I'm trying also to bring playful, that personal, yeah. as playful as the images are, yeah. the texts 
should be to bring you from maybe something more technical that yeah. is explaining to you how to draw but at the same time making that sound like a story yeah. or making that sound more like a chronic something yeah. you are really uh, uh, in Spanish there there's a genre that we call crónica yeah. which is like a story but not an essay it's yeah. more periodic it's more journalistic yeah, kind of yeah. uh, um, way to navigate yeah. on, on, on it but how how how, how much have you done and how long how long not have much. you been working on I've that? not got a long time <laughs> no I, I haven't done much to be honest um but that's fine I uh, do you fine. dream with the book do you see it not can yet. you can you I know what I want have to visions of but it. don't forget they came to me so in a way I'm not in control of the overall vision and that's where it's going to be a really interesting learning curve but one that I definitely want to kind of ride and it's going to be a really learning yeah it's, it's going to be a great learning experience and that's what i'm you know as much as i love drawing and writing it's to be always learning and to be always challenged to do something new and this came about out of the blue it's not what i planned i planned to do a second issue i planned to do xyz planned to do sketchy bitches in sheffield and manchester and, and it didn't happen but i i've started to reflect on that, that that's okay because other things have happened instead mm. of thinking god i haven't done this i haven't done that and um it's a really it's just an exciting like thing you know it's it's an adventure that we're all on together um and who knows what i'll be saying in a year's time but it feels like the world is turning in the right direction and that's in favor of, of, of creativity learning. and yeah. how important it is and how you know, life-saving and life-changing it can be, and how important, how 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 creative exercise and creativity is just as important to us as, as physical exercise. And without it, you know, we'll be we'll be fucked, <laughs> to yeah. be honest. And I think no, we, sorry, I swear. no, 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 um, yes. <laughs> sorry, we totally um, agree. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's it feels like it's a project which destiny it's to grow and grow and grow and um, probably because it, it's very positive and mm. all that means it's good and it's to encourage creativity and to encourage um, connection between people yeah. so i have the feeling you also start i have the feeling that you want to not be only in london yeah. you want to go to other cities and yeah, take yeah. over other other cities other yeah. places but you also recently started the adventure of recording a podcast yeah. and putting out there a podcast so and the book came out of the blue and yeah. they came to you. You you were not even looking for that at this particular moment. And you need to release also a next a second yeah. edition of Sketch Bill magazine. All these things together, it feels like you are gonna need people to work with, which is the idea, yeah. because you create this yeah. to not be just oh my on own. your own <laughs> yeah. to be Please, part, somebody to be, help me to be part of a collective Bring me of some a community. <laughs> so, uh, have you been thinking? It's really stressed me out <laughs> by reading all those things. And you've got this to do, and you've got that to do. And you've got, and I'm like, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Friday, I just wanted I just... to be uh, uh, enthusiastic and positive. I'm you are. Okay, let's do it one step no. at a time. No, I do. Tell me I about the love, podcast. I think I. Um, the podcast, I would love someone to work with me on that. No, I'm I'm recording the podcast mainly to bring to life some of the conversations that I have with all the the kind of inspiring women and men that I've met through this process. So it will be really interviewing uh, creative advocates, advocates of art mm -hmm, for all, like mm -hmm. you and Sue and various other people who've got a story relating to sketching or drawing and how that's helped them or how that's helped to connect with other people or themselves and it's really just another way of reaching a, a wider audience and spreading the message about how good drawing is for everyone um and i think because you don't hear those you don't hear the passion in um is it in difficult, a magazine. Is you it don't difficult hear, to something really... so visual um no because you're not showing you're you're talking about your your kind of like Something. this conversation yeah. because this is also going to be a pod, a podcast mm. only to be listened so you you definitely uh, the when it becomes a conversation about mm. something that is quite conceptual mm. also it's all always possible to mm. to just listen to it not yeah. having not needing necessarily a visual reference what what are your your um, 
idols when it comes to illustration or artists mm. or uh, do you have people that have inspired you all the way yeah i mean i but only really the people who inspire me day to day aren't artists and illustrators they're people in my life you know they they are people who give me strength and really inspire me to be who i am and stronger and to not give a shit but the, i suppose from an art point of view i can tell you who they are in a minute um from an art point of view i was very influenced by all the classics of the and i was just i think because i didn't you know i grew up pre-internet so all i knew when i was younger was picasso dali quentin blake and a maybe a bit more you know that was kind of it for me and i remember that was really that's definitely been this if you look at what how i draw that you can see the influence on how i on my drawing um but i still and i still love picasso i still love quentin blake there's just something inherently very i suppose picasso particularly you know very childlike about it about his work but also incredibly exquisite and amazing, amazing yeah. and Ama when um, you see the paintings in the flesh yeah. you realize that it is a work that cannot be done by someone that don't know really well what yeah. he wants to do and how, and how to yeah. achieve it and just how prolific i think anyone who's the, been that yeah. any artist i guess who is uh, but also conceptually so clever yeah for example he worked very little with um, women uh, modeling for him mm -hmm. but when he did it uh, in that big exhibition recently at the Tate there was a big big exhibition the the biggest uh, outside Paris with all Picassos mm -hmm. together and it, it was representative of the golden period of his life but when you see the paintings for example that he did after the lover he had and was his model at that time at that time you realize that he is not painting what she was how how she was looking he's painting probably the way she was feeling yeah. because those con you know what th those bodies that have the head here and mm. the body is all the other way and yeah, then yeah. the other part of the body is and it's exactly how you feel when mm. you are modeling it's actually very frustrating because when you see photos sometimes yeah. that's how it was looking that's yeah. not how it feels because when you are in a very strong twist yeah you feel like your body is practically collapsing yeah and then it doesn't look like that <laughs> but it feels like that yeah. and he I feel like he was catching these kind of things. Mm. I don't. I haven't heard anyone saying this, but it's my p personal opinion, because you can't see those super crazy twists, and that's how a model feels. Yeah, I felt really connected yeah, yeah. with those paintings. Some some of them very little, but uh, uh, Picasso is it's it's great to approach drawing in this way very very happy and it doesn't makes you feel intimidated you don't need to really know what's going on there <laughs> i think it just they just always i just think that his work always makes me smile but i don't think it always does but i think it just i connect with it um and i connect mainly with the pictures of his, his portraits and pictures paintings of people um, more so than I do with his ceramics or anything else, but ultimately I just think his body of work is incredible. Same with Dali, um, there's certain piece eras and things that he did that, I, that I'm not mad keen on, but things like his Alice in Wonderland illustrations that aren't as well known. Um, I just really, when I was a teenager, I suppose it's like your first love, isn't it? You get obsessed with things. I'm yeah. obsessed with Dali and obsessed with Picasso, and I went to Spain. And both that are time. figurative somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And More like, Dali than than Picasso, but so not for any artist, not for every artist. Mm -hmm. Art should be a happy place mm -hmm. or a happy experience or an. Most definitely a, a way to move your emotions or get in contact with mm. them or get connected with them. But not necessarily a happy place. There are many that they are very political, others yeah. that are more conceptual. or it, There's all kind of uh, the reasons we should turn to art or not. But definitely for you, you can feel this um, element of... Uh, 
being a happy place, yeah. uh, finding a happy place. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's not always in, I don't think it's always in, you can't always see it in my work because I do a lot of fashion. I don't, I still feel, and I say this as a sort of a massive hypocrite, but I still don't feel like I'm a proper artist because I don't draw from imagination and I, the people that I draw, it's not reflective of what's going on in my mind. I'm not someone who draws my mental health, the state of my mental health on a page. Like some people are incredibly, you know, that's their thing. They're really raw in the way they express themselves and literally, whereas I just, I draw as a way to relax and as a kind of my daily meditation. So what I draw is actually, if it's a picture of Kate Moss, what does that say? I'm shallow, I'm not, I don't, it, it's not meant to be saying anything, It's but it's serving me, it's for me. So that's where I think when I start to draw with something in mind or with a message in mind, I lose the fun. The fun, so for me, it's just a play, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think therefore I've always felt a bit slightly embarrassed about my own sketchbooks because they're mainly just fashion pictures, but that's why I'm drawing myself feels like, and drawing more self-portraits, feels slightly more unsettling, but more challenging. And like, I'm starting to develop the confidence to not always have to draw something that is very drawable, like mm -hmm. a proportioned model's face, you know? Yeah. And I'm being more experimental in my approach. And I think when you're working from your same frame of reference, or do you say reference every day yourself, then you can, you have to explore. Do you draw every experiment. day? Yeah. I every, every, every twice every a day. day, yeah. Twice a day. Like, like you, have, yeah, you, you have, have a routine, routine. like oh, having no. a bath. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna have a bath. I'm gonna do my draw of the day. <laughs> I do. I have my breakfast and then I sit on my bed for about oh, really? forty-five minutes and I draw oh, and I'm always late for work. That's um, amazing. I mean, and then in the morning. Yeah. So it's it's more or less the same. It's having meditation. that routine of. So it's definitely connected with self care. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. do you think? Do you think, especially in London, that can be the the winter can be too long, and it gets dark too soon, yeah. and you start feeling that drama of the lack of light. It's a little bit also a, a, a city very vibrant, full of options, full of of alternatives, very artistic, but at the same time people doesn't talk yeah. between them in the, on the street, so it's really difficult sometimes to connect. Mm. You can feel alone if yeah, you don't yeah. have your tribe, your people. Do you think that through draw, the exercise of draw, you start looking at things in a much, much colorful way? Uh, it allows you immediately to be more optimistic? I don't know. I think it's it definitely changes how you see yourself and the world. I think it makes you, the more you do it, that, and I, I, I've only just started to do this, but I, I draw people with my eyes. Like I start to, I've started to look at people in the street and go, oh, you've got a good nose, I'd like to draw that. And I'm looking, looking for details, not looking for sort of danger or not looking through people. I'm, I'm really looking and seeing and absorbing the world around me. So in a way, I'm not thinking, oh God, it's cold. I'm, I'm actually so sort of alert to, the inspiration that surrounds us every day. I think that's, I mean, that's the sort of time. No, I don't, yeah. but no, but I, I always, if I am feeling like that, I try and see, I try and just see, I suppose it sounds really cheesy, but the beauty in what, in, and the kind of the detail and, you know, uh, like. The little detail, the, the small de details. Yeah, and to try the and The devil is in the details. Yeah. As well. And I think <laughs> there's a thing where you're, yeah, to pay attention to detail, in a, but in a good way, in a non-critical way, I think is a really, that's what helps me to kind of get through long bike rides or, you know, like sometimes when you're cycling to work and you really do want. So I think, and that is part of that is having that artist's creative mind kind of more uh, alert than it, than I used, than it used to be. It was always thinking about what I've got to do at work and I'm trying to retune that really. But I'm not saying, I don't, I still struggle with winter and it's, it, I still, I think the loneliness that, that you can feel in London, I think anyone, even if you're, you know, you've got a partner or you are, we're living with lots of housemates, I think it's that weird sense of, ever, loneliness can creep in at any time, in any stage. Yeah. And I think Sundays were always my day of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not near my family. I'm single, I don't, don't have my people, everyone's out for Sunday lunch. Day in the to draw. <laughs> draw. But also that's when I started to run Sketchy Bitches cause, and that's where I felt like it, it was needed. Many and that's of the when events it worked. are yeah, on Sunday? Sunday afternoon because it's that time when people start to go, shit, I can't go to work tomorrow and everyone seems to be like having a really good time. You know, and if you don't want to just go for a 
Sunday roast but you want to bond with other people or you be it's just a really it is a really good day for drawing and unwinding and, and kind of it really reset, resets me every time I do a session on a Sunday afternoon I just feel so much better and so much more positive um because you know you're not alone you, you leave the, and I, I suppose that's why people you know it's not my church it was on a Sunday but it's a it's a similar thing where you go and you're part of a community on a regular basis for me drawing is my church sketchy bitches is my I'm not a religious person and, and it's really enabled me to find and if I am then my kind of the creativity and the creator is in the community around me and in the people around me and maybe that is god maybe that is where it is but it's but i found it in in a sort of the, the creative community um and i'm not going to kind of let that let that fade and i think that's where that's that's the thing that i didn't expect to be the big thing that really works that people get mm. but it's it is and that is so great and it's and that's where it is in infinitely and it's not because of my own kind of ego trip that i want to expand it but i think so many people it just would it's enjoy just growing up on itself yeah. yeah and not in a kind of like rapidly like oh my god it's not a money-making thing it's it's really just i want to grow that community because i know how kind of translatable it is and talking about to that different countries making and money and all the, <laughs> that stuff um what's the biggest event you have done what's the more ambitious uh... the one you were at was the biggest <laughs> one yeah the one up there because you were there <laughs> no, 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 no that no. was the most ambitious um event i did last year or this year was the, the women's day event. the women's day yeah and and it was i'm doing and planning another big one that was next beautiful year. Yeah. it was really really so cool. cool it yeah. was so, it's so cool stressful but really good and, um, and it was remember. nice to collaborate i think with other people and have sue there to run a mini workshop and to just make a make a day of it and to celebrate uh, you know every everyone and really yeah it was it was fun and i think i'm doing i've got a big project planned for next year that if it if i get funding for um because we're a community interest company so that means we're not it's not a profit making company uh, everything that i that we make which isn't anything goes back <laughs> into sketch appeal and enables me to run events so it's not um yeah, it's not a commercial business and therefore I'm able to apply for funds, which is great. And then I can run really meaningful projects working with sort of people with specialist needs um, and different groups and family intergenerational events, things like that. But I know you were very scared of working with yeah, kids, kids because because obviously the connection between your sessions, what you do, the way you draw, the kind of um, speech you have developed with the years connects really makes you the connection with why don't you do events for children very easy mm. do the, the, the you know the math but you were very scared but yeah. you did a session with kids and it was a mega success yeah. tell me about that it was with kids but it was also with adults so it was parents and children drawing each other well of course the same you, session. <laughs> I'm very, you want uh, someone I, there I'm just not, in case this is not a crash no but i think that's where i i know and i know from that session that no none of those parents that had sat and drawn each other, they, the parent child exchange of drawing is just as rare as you know it, I think, and it's that's a unique why I'm, experience yeah. for them and that's what they look and i think that's where wow. it isn't just about drawing together and drawing flowers or what it's about drawing each other and connecting with each other and i think it's that format you know it's the sketch dating format it's the thing that just makes people look at each other in the eye which is so scary in everyday life in london it's not yeah. something we do yeah. and yeah. and even parents and children like my parents i don't think i've looked i have now but like really if i I would never have looked my parents right in the eye, no, at least not in a positive way. It would have been like, what are you talk, yeah, you know, yeah. it would be an argument or confrontation, <laughs> not a kind of a, a kind of exchange yeah, yeah. of. Yeah, and I think you know, I remember the the mum and the, the son that came, and I thought, oh, they're going to be really strange about it. But they, it was just like, that was so much fun. I've never looked at my son like that. And and, and just, you did the exercise you normally do, like yeah, we played drawing. more games and we did some roller Picasso, like a game that I play that helps you to build faces in an abstract way. And they loved it. And I think it is. It's I'm I'm going to be running that um, monthly from next year. Um, and I'm I'm happy to do work with like and I'm not happy but I loved you know bringing families together was brilliant I'd love to get more grandmas in there and kids you know I think because it is it's just it doesn't actually mm. matter how old you are and I was very I was a bit kind of concerned about the time 
How, how long was it? So session? It, well, it was supposed to be two hours, but they wanted to stay, so it was three hours. Um, because people say children have no attention span, but actually adults have no attention span, yeah, and and kids can actually get really absorbed in play. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. if um, they are having fun, they yeah. can be there forever. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that's something that I I feel comfortable and, and excited about doing more of those. I think it was more the I don't want to do kids parties. I don't want to be sort of I'm not. It doesn't so, have I don't to be have, a kid party. No, exactly. Yeah. I think having a family there and it's the the message is very different. It's that draw, everyone can join, including adults, and drawing isn't just for kids. That's why I wanted to make sure it wasn't just come and dump your kids and then go and, and then come back. Because um, I'm not a mother and I felt as well like that was something I might be judged on by people. Like, what, who are you to try and teach my kids? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a teacher. This is not an art class. This is two hours of creative play and it's about connecting. But everyone knew that. Everyone yeah. had a very clear... Yeah, I think it's your own sort of like, oh. Do people expect me to be yeah, a teacher? Yeah. And I, I always like, I'm very clear in all of my workshops, I didn't go to art school. I don't know how to draw, how to draw technically correct, perfect pictures, but that's not the point. Um, and I... But I know, have a lot of experience. Yeah, and also, <laughs> ultimately, to bring it back to what, you know, I, I wouldn't be alive, I don't think, if I hadn't started drawing. And that's this kind of fundamental, you know, True. if you want a selling point for anything, it's that. Considering that drawing for you has been really helpful to overcome issues related with your mental health uh, that is being proven by your own experience but but many other experience that it helps lots with depression anxiety any kind of uh, stress when it when it really becomes out of uh, control have you ever thought about putting together, I don't know how to call it, but maybe something more health oriented? Yeah. Yeah. Funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am actually, I'm starting a project next, um, early next year that's going to be around self-love and self-portraiture. Um, that's basically a six week pilot project um, that will culminate in an exhibition at the end. Good, that was the yeah. other question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the exhibition I do want to do, I would love to do a work, um, an exhibition, a group exhibition with some of the sketchy bitches because I think we we always, um, we've, we've talked about it for a long time and it would be great to bring those sort of mini portraits somehow into an exhibition but that will be later in the year. But I'm doing, yeah, so I'm doing... So um, self-love to... Yeah. Self-portrait. Self-portraiture. And that will be a six-week um, project and it, that will have an exhibition at the end. So that's partly working with people who've been referred for um, for that as a sort of course of sketch therapy um, and partly working with kind of open public, um, yeah, public, anyone can book it. So it sounds very vague, but I know I don't, I just can't, I don't know how much I can talk you, about you, the You cannot yet. give away too much information. No, well, I think for me, it's a pilot project. Um, and then if it works, if the outcomes are positive, the idea is that I would then do that again and be able to roll that out as a six week session. So in the way that you have normal prescription for sick, for CBT on the NHS is six, six or eight, if you're lucky, you get six of psychotherapy. If you can kind of offer a, a course that is something that will hopefully nurture self-love and self-confidence along the way and has that sort of, I think everyone likes to have that, you know, the end result will be a showcase of the work and not in a oh this is I've got better at drawing along the way more about this is who I am and I'm confident enough to say here is here I am here are my self portraits and isn't that an honour and and sh and a confidence boost for people to have their work and pictures of themselves exhibited in the gallery terrifying but also really rewarding and yeah. I think that's where you know you look at anything like a kids short story competition or any adult child it's all about that end showcase and that is a really wonderful um part of the project that I'm really excited about because it isn't just going to be you know then you take away your thing at the end and off you go it's like there's going to be an exhibition it's not the Tate but that's the whole, that's not never the point of what I'm doing is never to make um a fine art you know it's not fine art it's it's everyday art and everyday um creativity that I promote and not um not fine not that I don't love fine art but there's just there's a place it's for not, it it's and not it, and what you do. can you know if you look at the ratio of people who can actually get into you know over time there's no point us trying and also why would it it's yeah it's not that's not why why I draw you are doing it. um 
To conclude this interview, I would like also to ask you something a little bit more polemic, let's say. But um, in this moment of uh, the, the world is talking a lot, we are all talking a lot about body positivity and it seems like um, all the sessions, life drawing sessions with naked uh, nude models helps a lot to approach bodies from a real perspective. We are not photographs, we are not perfect, we are not all tall, blonde and slim. There are many ways that a beautiful human being can be presented. So it, it, it encouraged a lot, not just the model, which is the person that have to do the role of put themselves there mm -hmm. and being drawn, but also the artists, they really, it really changed your perspective of what beauty should be and cleans a little bit all that noise. But your sessions, and you are all about body positivity, I feel, mm -hmm. are more because of probably your connection with fashion, with yeah. always uh, people dress up. Have you ever thought of combining both things? How, uh, is, it, is it a matter that worries you? Body positivity? How would you like to cooperate, also contribute with this? Um, I think part of that will hopefully we'll be exploring that in the project I'm doing next year um, and I would like to delve kind of more into it in, in the next yeah in the next year once I've kind of written the book and done all the other things that I need to do but it's not them. yeah I think there are some really brilliant groups that are doing some wonderful work in those areas like um oh god but have you... the, the but anti-diet riot club and there's a body um body love sketch club there's some really cool events going on in London but I haven't um I I just haven't kind of had chance to really develop the kind of not a strategy but yes to think too much about that but it's not because you are not interested. No, no, I'm very, I mean, obviously from my background and eat, with eating disorders, it's really an important area for me, but it's just something that I, from a, I think I need, like I said, I need to be able to be comfortable and... How would you combine your brand, which is so colourful and visually related a little bit with the um, style and fashion and uh, also connected with illustration a yeah. lot? the language of illustration, how would you do maybe sessions with nude models? I don't know, I haven't thought about it Th too That much, would be so. interesting yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see. I think it's just, it's one of those, it's such a big theme and it's such a, I think if I'm going to do it, I want to do it well and do it justice and it needs to be not just a sort of token or body positivity is quite topical let's get on that bandwagon and it's no mm. it would never be that because of who I am and what I've been through but ultimately um I, I don't want to kind of if there are already people offering that experience in London I don't yeah, want you to, also I, want I'm to not be, going to compete yeah. I'm going to collaborate or I'm going to let leave them to it and I will champion them through sketch appeal because the other thing about sketch appeal is that it's not just about me promoting our events it's about promoting the creative community and that's already here in London and really trying to find those people who are doing really wonderful things with drawing and making it accessible and making and, and creating innovative events that aren't just about drawing for or not even drawing but painting to get good at it or in a sort of traditional adult education courses all those things that you know life drawing classes are very much often just going through the motions artists getting their work out I think there's some really great um great initiatives and great women as well doing wonderful things in that area so um i'd like to meet them and then think about what um what what else i could offer and if it's going to offer something that they don't and how i can add add value to the conversation or oh, maybe not yeah, maybe not maybe yeah not. i just wanted I'd, to I'm, i, I was definitely just curious. want to participate in it more um but yeah like i said there's so many events and there's so many events that i haven't done yet that i want to do that I feel confident that I, I know will work. Until I've come up with that idea, I'm not I'm not gonna kind of jump on it. And you definitely have made a difference doing what you do. So mm. you probably also in, understood uh, in a very efficient way that there was a need of mm. something different yeah. to add to the live drawing scene in London. How would you describe um, your style if you should with not many words? Um, 
untamed. <laughs> <laughs> My style of drawing is yes, your style sketchy, is rough, um, playful, and uh, that's it, really. Do you consider yourself an artist? Uh, I'm going to say yes, because I would be a massive hypocrite if I didn't. No, I do. I do. I think we all are, but I do feel like an artist now, um, because I see like an artist now, and I think that's when I know that I am one, I think. Yeah. A secret? Can you tell me a secret related with the future and your dreams that you haven't told uh, publicly? Uh, <laughs> No, I don't, I don't keep secrets, Carla. I'm like, I am a bit too outspoken by my good. No, I don't... I don't have a secret. There's nothing that exciting. I, I mean, like I said, I have got a bit of big... If I get to do this big project in May next year that I want to do, um, then that would be something that potentially would run every year in London and would be quite... This one about the self-portrait? No, 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 no. You don't know what it's about yet. Oh, okay. No, okay. it would just be, I hope, my aim with that is to get that on the kind of, as a kind of part of a cultural calendar that people recognise in London. And not in a, again, not, not because I want to have a massive event in London, but because I think it could be a really cool way to bring together, bring together the London community and not just 30 people. But anyway. <laughs> okay, this interview have finished. Mi casa es tu casa. Thank, Thank you, you for coming and being Thank here with us. But also, please, uh, take those colors because mm. now we are going to start drawing a little bit. This is finished, but we haven't finished. No, <laughs> what am I drawing on this? <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Thank you. So, so much. There are so ma okay. many others. So now we're going to draw and you're going to draw me. I, I will draw you. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.